a look at this lovely Sibley squash. It is quite slate blue gray and it's turning pink. What does this mean? It is actually a fabulous sign. And friends, welcome to live Q&A here at Fruition Seeds. I'm Petra, sending love in the frosty, frigid cold. We just came in from a glorious ski and I am so excited to share some live Q&A with you all this morning. I love to start, of course, our live Q&As and end with a song, story, poem with something to begin and end our time together. And this morning, a song from that I was taught by my dear friend Elisa and she was taught by her friend Issa Barnwell of Sweet Honey and the Rock and it goes like this. I wanna sing, sing, sing. I wanna dance, dance, dance. I wanna sing, I wanna dance. Hallelujah, when those gates are open wide, I'm gonna be there by your side. Yeah, I wanna sing, I wanna dance. Hallelujah. And there's some lovely harmonies and so many other parts to sing along with it, and I hope we get to sing together one day. And in the meantime, welcome, welcome, welcome to live Q&A. Jump right in, don't be shy. And yes, here also is what's going on with the squash. So it's true, this is Sibley, think Blue Hubbard style, except way more delicious. And it's kind of this beautiful slate blue gray color. And it's starting to turn pink. And what does that mean? That actually means that she is coming into her prime. She has never been more delicious. So there's this interesting thing that happens with squash, especially in these kind of Hubbard style Maxima squashes, where it's really different than something like a delicata. So delicata, delicious right off the vine, even in August, certainly September. And her skin is so thin, totally delicious and delectable, but our delicatas are done for the year. They don't store so long. But these longer storing squash, need they need curing. Where delicata is delicious even without a good cure, these longer storage squashes need a good cure. And then just through storage, they're continuing to just deepening and more complex, more rich, more dense their flesh so it's creamier. So yes, this is a squash coming into its own. For whatever reason, that pink is an indicator that this squash is reaching the apex of her deliciousness in terms of flavor, in terms of texture. She's just coming into her own. So it's honestly looking for those little tinges of pink. You can see, oh my gosh, some little stripes of pink. And you'll start to see them going on like here is where the squash has been sitting on our kitchen table because I just think it's a beautiful squash. So I want to see it every day. So it's here. We're watching it every day and it's there turning pink right where it's been sitting along the on the counter getting the least airflow. So there are some fun little tips. If you want to be storing squash, keep in mind that 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% humidity is the dream, but honestly, I'm amazed how well our squash store just on our kitchen counter. The more airflow, the better for them as well especially if they're in a little warmer environment. And take a look too. I actually jumped into our Across the Seasons calendar and I love to record things in it. And so our Across the Seasons calendar, it's a perpetual calendar. So it has dates, one, two, three, four, five, but it doesn't have days of the week. Instead of Monday through Sunday, it has years. So here you can write it on in, like here's 2020 and here's 2021. And I'm so excited to see. So you can see across the seasons what you're learning and amplify your abundance and also like make adaptations as you go. So you can see here on the 18th of January, I wrote in Sibley squash turns pink. So <laughs> I'm so excited to see in every year. You know, what is what are those little things? And another fun fact about our perpetual calendar, at the bottom of each month, there are some fun little tips, things that we're doing here on the farm. So in January, we're cozying up with seed catalogs and we're planning our gardens. See Fruition's gar Guide to Garden Planning and our blog. Also stay tuned, we're gonna do so throughout February. We'll have tons of dates here on Facebook and also 
um, in Zoom rooms. We're gonna be hanging out with tons of folks and talking garden planning. So definitely jump on in, don't be shy. If you are don't already get our emails, join our email list, send us a little message, um, and we'll be happy to add you. You can find it at fruitionseeds.com too. Yes. And yeah, what else is on our January to do? Oh, observe the tracks of who visits our compost pile. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. Organize seeds, share them with friends, and germination test old seeds. Check out our whole blog about that. So yes, so many fun things, and I am so delighted. This is live Q&A, so jump right in and don't be shy. And Sharon says, how to cook the squash? What a wonderful question. There are so many things that you can do with it, and certainly anytime you are you know, you have a squash recipe, this will be fabulous for it. My personal favorite way is just to slice them in half, put them upside down and roast them the first half, like 20, 25 minutes face down. And then I flip them up, brush the top of that squash with oil. And then that kind of like, it makes the most amazing, just like the top of it gets nice and crispy and it didn't like concentrates the sweetness. So honestly, I mean, just roasted squash doesn't get any better for me. <laughs> but we also, we made a lovely squash curry soup the other night and oh my gosh, there's a thousand, a thousand ways for you to enjoy it. Another hot little tip, sometimes these Sibley and these other squash that are long storage squash. Like I first met Sibley in late June in the upper St. Lawrence and it had been grown of course the following season prior. So it's a very long storing squash when it's grown well, harvested well, cured well, and stored well. And so that, I mean, basically look at the skin. It's like shrink wrapped. <laughs> So sometimes it can be really challenging to cut into and so especially as time goes on So sometimes if I'm really if it's if I'm concerned for like having all of my fingers at the end of the day um, I'll just put the entire squash in the oven and let it roast for about 20 minutes and like soften Basically steam from the inside out and at that point It's much easier to cut in half and scoop out the seeds and go from there and Kimberly says, good morning from balmy Northeast New York. <laughs> yes, sending love from the single digits of the Finger Lakes as well. <laughs> I hope you are nice and cozy and enjoying this beautiful snow. And Teresa says, good morning from West Virginia. Oh my gosh, we love West Virginia. Thank you so much for joining. And Jason says, no questions this morning. Just wanted to say that we love you, Petra. Thank you, Jason sending love to you too. And actually in this moment, I think you had asked me for a quote a few months ago and I think I didn't even respond because I was like, that's so sweet and I have no words that are my own. I just share everything that I am learning and I don't think I even responded. And if that is you, I apologize and thank you. <laughs> and if that isn't you, <laughs> well, there's a fun little story. <laughs> oh, and um, Dottie asks, how do you cure the squash? So curing is a process in the fall. After you harvest it, you want to put your squash in a warm, dry place with plenty of airflow for about two weeks. Um, so we actually put it in our greenhouse and we put it rather than in a pile, we want there to be lots of good airflow. So we're actually putting them on pallets. So there's airflow below and we're putting them in a single layer. And so that curing it, in, in a warm place. So it cools down over at night, but in the day it's like, if you can be over 75 degrees, that gets the best, quickest cure. So that curing, kind of think of it as like kind of shrink wrapping the squash. So it helps it like just all that, all that skin just tighten ever so slightly. And that way it will store much longer over the long haul of the winter. There are so many things to keep in mind though, like delicata is not a long storing squash. So no matter how well you cure it, it's not going to last deep in past like New Year's. If you're eating them by the mid January, it's a miracle. So, <laughs> so that being said, within individual species, um, some and varieties, some just store longer than others. But that is such a good question and I can't wait to dive more in when we're back into squash curing season um, next September. And Luella, good morning Luella, good morning from Detroit. No questions right now, just delighted to soak in, enthusiastic. Oh. <laughs> Matthew's 
just coming in the door. Pardon our enthusiastic dogs. <laughs> just delighted to soak in enthusiasm from another seed nerd. Yes, don't be shy and can't wait to share the farm with you one day when you find yourself in the Finger Lakes post-pandemic times. Um, and Scott, oh my gosh, hello Scott, sending so much love. We are thrilled to see the calendar. Wrap the squash in foil and slow cook it in a wood stove. Yes, on a bed of coals, amazing. One degree in Maine. Oh, stay cozy and send our love to your loves. That's oh, awesome, Scott. I love that you're using your wood stove to bake squash that I'm literally salivating. <laughs> And Kathleen says, good morning from Camp Goodman. Good morning, Kathleen. I am so excited to log them on my fruition planning calendar. <laughs> and Peggy says, good morning from sunny Florida. Sending so much love to Florida as well. I love this. And good morning from Wynwood, Pennsylvania. Good morning from Southwest Missouri. So excited to learn more and th thoughtful gardening with you. Our second year having a big garden. Right now we have about 400 starts inside. That's amazing. Show us pictures. So beautiful. And thanks for taking care of our great, 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 great grandbabies. When people ask Matthew and I if we have children, we say yes, and great, great, great grandchildren. <laughs> and they grow us more than we grow them. <laughs> and I'm so excited for you, sending love to Missouri. And good morning from Westchester, PA. What fun. Good morning from Buffalo, says Betty. Sending love to Buffalo. And dreaming of spring and seeds this chilly morning. Thanks for your enthusiasm and hard work preserving seeds. My huge, huge, huge joy. And so glad to join you on the journey. It takes a village. And we couldn't do what we do if you weren't doing what you do. And it's such a joy to be able to do this together. And Dustin says, I love your gardening enthusiasm. Can't wait to enjoy your videos and plant, enjoy the planting season. Yes, we're all in this together. And, um, oh, Sharon asks, can this squash be found in the grocery store? I don't remember seeing the squash. It will not be found in a grocery store. The vast majority of, I mean, all varieties on the planet will not be found in the grocery store, <laughs> right? There are thousands, hundreds of thousands of varieties of everything. And there's just a few hundred varieties that have, quote, made the commercial commodity cut. And so we think that, <laughs> <laughs> we think that, you know, carrots are orange and there's a whole rainbow of carrots. We think that lettuce is green and maybe sometimes red and there's all so many spectrums of colors, shapes, sizes, textures, heat tolerance, cold tolerance. There's so many different varieties. So yes, this is a brilliant heirloom squash that you'll never find. At, at a grocery store and you probably won't even find it at a farmer's market although her kissing cousin blue cup blue hubbard um, is much more available but not nearly as delicious as sibley so thank you so much for asking and donna says good morning from atlanta new york just a few miles away oh my gosh we just spent the night down in the urbana state forest above hammondsport between you and hammondsport and it was so dreamy the snow last night and the snow in the sunlight this morning we live in a beautiful place and i'm so glad you're just over the hill and louise says i was surprised that your dahlias and ginger are already sold out i looked a few weeks back but not sold out yet so here's the thing, and I'm so sorry, our new website is wrong. It's not sold out, they're not available yet. They're available March 1st, which if you put, open up the product, the ginger itself, it says that, but on the, like, the main page it just says sold out. Ah, I'm, we're working so hard all, on our new website, friends, and it's kind of very frustrating. So yes, we have tons of ginger. We have our dahlias, potatoes. Also, March 1st, we will have all of those wonderful roots, rhizomes, tubers available for you. So don't be daunted on our website. Our website is wrong. You can't order it yet, but you can March 1st. So mark your calendar. And also, if you don't already get our emails, now you know our email is 
the way to get all of our, be the first people to know of all of these exciting things and so much more. So I'm sorry to confuse you, Louise, and thanks for asking. Um, and Jeff says, good morning from 15 degree Cumberland, Maryland, spreading manure and wood chips. Amazing, that's a great way to sell, stay warm. And Leslie says, do you sell seeds for zucchino rapicante? And very similarly, we have tromboncino. So a little different, a little different strain, but same idea. Check out tromboncino. It's like the Italian trombone squash. Um, and yes, it's one of my very, very favorites of all time. And Michelle says, good morning from Lancaster, PA. Just love fruition. Just love you. Oh, we will miss being in Lancaster um, this spring and can't wait to join you again in the future. And Kathleen says, I missed the description of this squash. Is it a Hubbard? It's Sibley. So Sibley squash, same genus species as Hubbard, but much more refined in terms of flavor. She's much sweeter, more creamy. She honestly always tastes to me like she's been roasted in coconut oil, even though we haven't roasted her in coconut oil. So the flavor is so significantly um, just more depth and complex and divine compared to Blue Hubbard. So yes, Sibley winter squash. And um, yes, Kate says, well, how about peanuts? And so for peanuts, we have sold out of everything that we have to share for 2021 already. I am so sorry, but check out 2022. We will have so many more seeds to share with you, friends. So I'm so sorry to disappoint you. And thank you for asking. And Michelle asks, when do you divide dahlias? We divide them in fall. You can also divide them in spring. There's lots of different schools of thought on it. And of course, they all have their pros and they all have their cons. We love to divide them in fall because when they've stored through the winter, they'll, they tend to like shrivel up a little and it's more like cutting leather <laughs> than cutting a living thing. So it's just easier to divide them for us in the fall. Um, but in the spring, honestly, if you aren't saving a ton of dahlias, and especially if you don't want to like maximize your dahlia tuber production and you just want to like quarter the the tubers, the plant itself from that main stem, then just wait for spring. And um, But check out too, we have lots of great blogs and um, all kinds of stuff on dahlias on our website as well. And stay tuned, our website is very much in transition. You can very easily purchase things on our website, but and hopefully in just a few weeks we'll have our learn side all set up because right now you'll go to learn, you'll see there's blogs. It's not, it's, it, if you love it now, you're going to lose your mind. It's about to be so much better in a few weeks and much more integrated. Um, but yeah, we have by certainly by the time you're dividing dahlias, you'll find tons and tons and tons of videos right at arm's length um, on our website. And I can't wait. And Nancy asks, um, are you going to the Philadelphia Flower Show? Can we get on your calendar? We don't plan on going to the flower show in June, honestly. Um, and I won't bore you with all of the details, but hopefully we'll see you in the future times, but we're not planning on it for this year. But stay in touch and jump on our email list if you haven't already so that you can be involved in all of our virtual events and hopefully we'll be able to do some, some live events somewhere sometime in the future. And if you're on our email list, you'll be the first to know. Um, and Donna says, I like to try something new each year. This year, it's kohlrabi! Any hints or ideas? Yes, so with kohlrabi, be sure that you transplant it. You can also direct sow it, but you'll be better off um, transplanting it. And even though it seems like a root vegetable and you never want to transplant root vegetables, kohlrabi actually technically, botanically, is a swollen stem. And it's not, its root is just this little tap root. So they are fabulous to transplant. And yeah, they love hunger or they don't like to be hungry. So be sure that you feed them abundantly, whether it's 
compost, our compost crumbles, our granular organic fertilizer, fish emulsion, um, and they love to grow in the cooler weather too. So be sure to plant them, think like broccoli style in spring or hail when you're planting your radishes, you can start planting your kohlrabi. And so in the spring and in the fall, it has the sweetest, um, most tender, most creamy, most juicy kohlrabi. Other tips, they love to be, if you're direct sowing them, make sure you thin them at the right time. If you don't thin them at the right time, they won't bulb up into those glorious kohlrabi orbs, which I love so well. So you wanna make sure that you're thinning them to like four inches at least between plants um, when they're about two inches, no more than three inches tall. Um, and of course, if you're direct, one of the reasons we love transplanting them is we can transplant them at just that right perfect spacing. So that's one of the many reasons we love to transplant them. And Peggy says, I'm also growing kohlrabi in the first time here in Florida, never grew them before. Yay! I would plant them right now. I don't know how well heat is going to, how well kohlrabi is going to grow in the heat of Florida summers, but I think right now they'll be fabulous for you. And Teresa asks if I'm going, we're going to the Mother Earth News in Seven Springs. We're not planning on it. Um, we're going to assume, we're like orienting ourselves that just, COVID times are um, going to be continuing on for some time. And we, so yes, we aren't planning at this point any events um, in 2021. But I'm so glad that you asked and stay tuned because we're gonna be doing tons and tons and tons of virtual events this year so that we can all be more in community um, in any way that we possibly can that still feels safe. Um, and Kathleen says, will you be coming to New England this year? I don't know. I'm sure that we will, but maybe not for big public events. So stay tuned for the future times. And would you recommend, says Dottie, recommend sowing ginseng seeds randomly in the woods of Tennessee? I would not recommend random. Ginseng doesn't grow randomly. She wants to grow in, you know, where it's like basically like 80% full canopy and take a look, where's your wild sarsaparilla growing? Like where are some of the other wild co blood cohosh, blue cohosh, some of the other plants that are indicators of that same environment that ginseng wants to be in and plant your seeds there, not randomly. Um, and one more question before we call it a Saturday morning. Um, and Rachel says, good morning from Morristown, New Jersey. Do you do any winter sewing outside in milk jugs now? If so, any success with it? And honestly, we don't do a lot of winter sewing. We prefer to sew abundantly in the fall and then over winter baby greens. And we find that those are so much more effective and resilient. Um, but honestly, we also have two feet of snow on the ground right now here in Western New York, sending love from fruition. Um, but for you and New Jersey, if in more mild temperatures, more mild climates, you have so many options. And so whether it's arugula, kale, radishes, cress, if you want to sow cilantro, don't be daunted. Um, yeah, there's lots and lots and lots. Um, spinach will be so serving you well. Claytonia is my favorite of all time. Mosh, also cold hardy seeds um, you will do fabulously with. So have so much fun and don't be shy. Um, well friends, I am so sorry that I did not get through all of our questions. Um, know you can reach out to us anytime. We will do our best to respond to you as promptly as possible. And um, oh my gosh, I can't help myself but respond to a couple more questions. They're just so fun. What depth row cover do we off, do we share? We have two different weights. We have our insect, very lightweight row cover that's perfect for insect exclusion in the summer. And then we have also our like heavy duty, cover it up season extension floating row cover for for the winter. So even if you have some greens or for your winter sewing beds and want to get some hoops and floating row cover to set up now, um, we've got it all on our website at fruitionseeds.com and those two weights make all the difference. And also what is in your DIY potting mix? Um, yeah, you'll find lots of things and I'm, I'm realizing if you're asking me that, that's probably because 
there isn't a list on our website of the ingredients, which there should be, which I will go promptly check it out after this live and make sure that you know, because that's, I mean, a core transparency that you need to know. But basically tons and tons and tons of minerals organically based so that you can be confident. It's basically all of the minerals that aren't in <laughs> most potting mix because they're the expensive part <laughs> and so yeah we have this wonderful DIY potting mix that comes in a little um, jar and it can it comes with a recipe so you can make 80 quarts of your own um, great high quality potting mix that's actually perfect for soil blocking as well so yeah, there's gypsum, oh my gosh, all kinds of things. So I can't wait to, I'll make sure that it's on our website for you, my friend. But thank you for asking, Michelle, because I wanna refresh my memory and I wanna make sure that we're being transparent about everything that you wanna know, because what else are we doing with our lives? Um, and I'm so, and oh, one more question from Susan, and then I have to call it quits. Another, about to place another order <laughs> and a question about a few tomatoes. Love it. I prefer thinner skin. And how are the Pianolo, Gardener Sweetheart, and Cherry Ember? Any variety you sell that is particularly thick skinned. Thanks. So yeah, the Pianolo, it's a fabulous paste tomato, but it does have a little thicker skin. And that's part of what makes her amazing at storage, right? Before freezing, before canning, Pianolo on the slopes of Mount Vesuvius was being, their trusses were being harvested at like 85% maturity and then hung, strung in their, in people's homes for months so that they could store those tomatoes without any kind of other, you know, this is well before refrigeration and canning and freezing and all these other techniques for food preservation. So it's that thicker skin of Pianolo that allows those tomatoes to store more long-term like that. So mouthfeel, it's not a big deal. I don't think of it as a thick skin tomato, but it is thicker skin than Gardener Sweetheart and Cherry Ember, which are also very crack resistant as a result of having a slightly larger, th slightly thicker um, skin. But the mouthfeel, like, I would lose a lose bets, like, <laughs> which is why I don't bet. <laughs> like, there, you won't think to yourself, wow, that's a thick skin tomato, Petra. Um, so I would wear the Pianolo, I would, especially if you're going to be um, storing them longer, that, that skin definitely like thickens with time. Um, so I would recommend the Gardener Sweetheart and the Cherry Ember for the thinner skinned tomatoes. Um, and certainly in the flavor department, you won't be disappointed. Um, and if I was comparing the Gardener Sweetheart and the Cherry Ember just on flavor alone, I would go with the Gardener Sweetheart for sure. She has Sweet 100 in her parentage and there is just She's heaven. And cherry ember is delicious too. Here's a hot little tip. She, if you harvest her right at the moment when you think that she looks ripe, she's good. Compared to anything that you'll ever find at a grocery store, she's incredible. But if you let that tomato sit for on the vine for another five, 10 days, um, the flavor just deepens, becomes more rich and complex. So yes, wait for those cherry ember tomatoes to like fully soften on the vine and for the fullest, best expression of their flavor. And this has been so lovely, friends. I'm so, so grateful for you all joining me, keeping me warm on this frigid morning and sending love from our cold, snow-laden gardens to yours. And I love to end as we begin all our live Q&As with a story, song, poem, with something to ground us in our time together. And this morning, a song. And I learned this song from our dear friend Elisa, who learned this song from Issei Barnwell of Sweet Honey in the Rock, and it goes like this. I wanna sing, sing, sing. I wanna dance, dance, dance. I wanna sing, I wanna dance. Hallelujah, when those gates are open wide, I'm gonna be there by your side. Yeah, I wanna sing, I wanna dance. Hallelujah. And there's a lovely harmony part as well that goes like this. I want to sing, sing, sing. I want to dance, 
dance, dance, I want to sing, I want to dance, hallelujah, when the skates are open wide, I'm going to be there by your side, yeah, I want to sing, I want to dance, hallelujah, and a fun fact, that song has the same exact chord progression as swing low, sweet chariot, as well as Oh, when the saints come marching in. So you can sing all of those songs together. They overlap in amazing ways with incredible harmonies. And now you know, and I hope that one day we get to sing together as well as this year where we get to sow seeds together. Certainly, literally, even if it's virtually, I can't wait to start seeds with you soon. Stay tuned for all of those dates upcoming that we're about to share where we're going to host all kinds of virtual garden planning parties and seed sowing parties. It's going to be so much fun and I can't wait to do it with you in person and know that that's what we're doing now too. Even if we are not sowing seeds yet, even if we won't be sowing seeds for another two months, each thought that we think, everything that we eat and drink, these are all seeds, seeds that we share with ourselves, with each other, and are making room for everything that's to come. So thank you for sowing the seeds of community, of hope, of connection this morning. And this is one of the many reasons why we do what we do. And thank you for being why we do what we do. I can't wait till next time and don't be shy. <laughs>